What's up everyone, this is Danny. Today I'm reviewing the Moga Hero and Moga Pro Power Android controllers for your smartphone or your tablet. These products are a continuation of their great controllers that they've put out in the past with a battery pack now included in both of them and the Hero Power is available for $60 and the Pro Power is available for $80. So let's go ahead and unbox these things and see what comes in the box. Let's start with the Moga Pro Power Box first. Let's get the documentation and the warranty stuff out of the way. The first thing you will see is a tablet stand. So of course these can be connected to a tablet like a Nexus 7 which I will show you later on so you can rest that on there while you play your video games. The next thing you will see is a short micro USB to USB and I'll show you what to do with that later and a longer micro USB to USB. Alright let's go ahead and get the controller out of there and this is the bigger out of the two and we will compare these later on in the video. Let's go ahead and put that aside and go straight to the Moga Hero Power which is the cheaper out of the two and the smaller and we will definitely compare these two and let you know which one I like most later on and of course this still comes with the smaller micro USB to USB and the larger USB to micro USB so all the stuff aside let's go ahead and compare the two right now both of these devices are constructed the same but they're meant for two different audiences. One is meant to be a little bit more pocketable and the other one's meant to give you a more console feel since the size is more comparable to an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4 controller and they both connect via Bluetooth and they both have batteries inside but they do differ a little bit so let's go ahead and take a look at the Pro Power first. The Pro Power series is meant to be the premium one out of the two and features a whopping 2200 milliamp battery for elongated gaming goodness and if you flip this little orange latch up here that's where you will be able to put your device into and you'll see the off switch the A and B switch and I will go ahead and explain those later on in the video. The Pro Power controller features everything that you would expect out of a Pro controller and that is directional pad, dual analog sticks, X, Y and AB buttons, select start and even a button to show you how much charge you have left on your device and also four trigger buttons on the back that are very responsive. The Hero Power features everything that the Pro Power does but it's in a smaller package and it features an 1800 milliamp battery instead of the 2200 milliamp battery and it is much thinner and it's definitely more pocketable but it definitely has all of the same things that you'd find there the dual analog sticks the X Y A B buttons the select start and everything that you would expect out of a gaming controller for your Android device. You can see how much smaller that the Hero is compared to the Pro and there are USB ports in the back and they are calling it Moga Boost and this is where you can charge your device while you're playing video games. Pretty awesome. The build quality of both of these devices are very good and the dual analog sticks definitely stick out and the directional pads are pretty clicky and the buttons are also nice especially on the pro version they definitely feel like something that you would get from a console these days they both have a different feel in the hand when it comes to gaming and i will go over this later on in the review and tell you which one i think is the best buy for your money the install of a smartphone is extremely easy all you have to do is use this adjustable clip here and here is a Nexus 5 with the case in it. No problem, it just fits right in there. It's very grippy and it's weighted very well so it doesn't tip over. So let's go and take a look at this controller. There is one downfall with this installation process. Let's say you have something like an Xperia Z1 where you have the power button and the volume rocker right on the side of the device, right in the middle. That means that clip is gonna get in the way and you're not gonna be able to use it with this controller. That's kind of a bummer. I guess you could always use this stand to put your Z1 or another affected device on there and play your games, but this stand was made for a tablet so you can connect to it and play it separately. Sorry guys, the Nexus 7 does not fit on the Pro. But only thing you have to do to connect these is just go ahead and get the Moga Pivot app right from the actual Play Store and pretty much it. It just kind of automates you through the whole process. It even turns on Bluetooth for you and just hit yes and then all you have to do is pick the actual control that you have. So it doesn't matter which one that you have and hit it 
and you can go ahead and set up A or A and B. So do whatever you want to do and just hit pair and it will look for it and in about 20 to 30 seconds it will pair your controller with your device. So very easy when it comes to pairing. The Moga Pivot app has the list of compatible games and you can scroll through those and it'll take you directly to the Play Store to download them but they don't have all of the compatible games listed on here and some games are compatible in the Play Store that they don't list so make sure you try them out kind of go on some forums and find out which ones are compatible but the Pivot app does a pretty good job of congregating all of the compatible apps. It's surprising actually how many games have MOGA controller support and it will list that right in the Play Store itself. If you go to the description a lot of times it'll say MOGA controller support and games like Asphalt 8 it definitely takes it to the next level here. You're getting that console experience with this controller and you know touch gaming is okay and it does well for the experience but it's nothing like having physical controls because you're really getting that console experience here and with these mobile graphics now being pushed to the next level physical controls on a game like this definitely makes it better and I enjoyed playing Asphalt 8 way better on the MOGA controller than just on the touchscreen. I think any games like Grand Theft Auto were just made for physical controls and it takes a lot of the frustration out of the game and plus it's always awesome to beat up people with physical controls. Much better. And Dead Trigger 2, I mean any kind of first person shooter is also elevated by these controllers. It just really gives you that console type feel on your mobile device and I definitely recommend playing these kind of games with physical controls. Enough said. The Pro Power Controller has a great feel in the hand and some people might think it's a little bulky especially if you have really small hands you might feel that it's too big but I feel like it's just right. It's got the same size as a console controller and the grip is really nice on here and it's a little bit bulky and I like it. It gives it a sturdy feel and it really does well especially with big devices like the Galaxy Note 3 and I really like the feeling of this controller and it's constructed well and it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart no creaks or anything like that the best inclusion of this controller is definitely the battery pack that's inside of there and it's self-explanatory with this short cable that they give you and now you have a charge going to your device while you're playing video games and that definitely prolongs your gaming time it looks a little funny but it's not that bad but there's only one downside to this. It depends on how much power that your device draws. So if you have your screen all the way up or if you're playing really graphically intensive games, it's really not gonna charge the device. It's just gonna prolong how much the battery goes down on it. So from my experience, it added about two hours of gameplay on here. Very good in my opinion. Of course, if you're not gaming though, you can just use it as a battery pack and it will give you a full charge to most devices. These controllers do not come with a power brick, but you charge it by micro USB to USB. But another tactic is you can actually plug this thing into an external battery pack if you want to prolong your gaming. So that's pretty cool too. And I use this Rav Power one and I was able to get a tremendous amount of gameplay with the combo of these. Pretty awesome. I mentioned earlier we we're going to talk about this A and B mode and the A mode is where you're just going into MOGA compatible games like from the Play Store but the B mode is HID mode where the games that are not compatible with MOGA it lets you program the buttons and key patterns and that's important to people that love emulators such as myself. You'll have to sync it with B mode or HID mode via the MOGA Pivot app but after that, it works flawless with most emulators. My Note 3 is not rooted, by the way. This is on stock firmware, so you no need to root it to get this to work. And just get rid of those on-screen buttons right there. Just go right into your emulation settings and get rid of that, and you're in for hours of classic gaming goodness. And that's what I love this MOGA controller for. I love emulation. This brings your count of games to an infinite level for you can get so many games now that are compatible with your mode controller. Classic games like Super Mario World, love this game from childhood, just one of my favorite games of all time. So emulation is definitely a go on the MOGA controllers. 
If you're a fan of big devices, then I would definitely buy the Moga Pro Power because it holds larger devices and it would just feel more comfortable. So the 5.7 inch Galaxy Note 3, no problems with it whatsoever. And I'm sure it would hold something like an Oppo N1, which is a six inch device. But if you have a smaller device like an Oppo R819, an HTC One or something like that, I would definitely go with the Hero Power. But if you have a Nexus 5, you can kind of go both ways, I guess, because it's a 5-inch screen and it works well on both. And even if you had a Hero, 5-inch devices are also good for gaming. And it doesn't tip over anything or doesn't feel weird or too heavy. It fits just perfect on both of these controllers. Now, I've used these controllers for almost a month now. And I have to say that I prefer the Pro Power. Let me tell you why. Because of the Hero Power... It's a little bit light and some of the buttons, they feel a little bit hollow and the X, Y and A, B buttons, they don't click as well and the dual analog sticks are a little small and the trigger buttons are actually also a little hollow, not as responsive as the Pro Power. The Pro Power just feels so good in the hand and if you're used to console gaming, then I definitely prefer this one. And only for a $20 difference, I would definitely go for the Pro Power because I just think it's a better device overall. So what do I think about these MOGA game controllers? I love them. I think it's a cheap way to turn your smartphone or tablet into a gaming system instead of buying something like an Nvidia Shield. I mean, these game systems can get pretty expensive and the games are also very expensive. So parents, if you're looking for a cheaper gaming system with you know cheap 99 cent games in the App Store that might be compatible with the MOGA controllers, that's the better way to go here. And when it comes to the actual size itself, you can see that the Pro Controller is a little bit smaller than the Xbox One controller, and it's a little bit chubbier than the PlayStation 4 controller. If you want a smaller and more portable gaming controller, then I would go for the Moga Hero Power, because it still has an 1800 milliamp battery, and it's definitely more pocketable than the Pro would be, and it's smaller than anything else that's out there when it comes to a gaming system. The only downsides are the Bluetooth connectivity. Sometimes it doesn't cut off, but it stutters a little bit during gameplay, but it's nothing that's too crazy. So I would definitely recommend this. Go ahead and turn your smartphone or tablet into a gaming system and go ahead and buy the MOGA controllers. I recommend it. So let me know what you think about these two controllers. Now the batteries are included inside. Is that the final push to go ahead and buy one of these controllers? Or let me know what you don't like about it and what you like about it in the comment section below. Follow me on Twitter at Super Scientific. Subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.